everyone, welcome back to the kitchen. Today I'm gonna share with you how I organize my kitchen cupboard next to my stove and two of my pantries in my back hallway. Let's go see how this all comes together. Today we're gonna make Okay, for years this cabinet has been the bane of my existence. As you may know, I am a real spice fiend. But I also have a lot of different ingredients and I came to this realization that I needed a different way to organize my pantry stock and this cabinet is right next to the stove. So it has all those things that you reach for all the time. She's also the clean up queen of shove. He calls me the queen of shove. It's true. I'm not going to lie. I, ha I have to claim my title, the queen of shove. It's not a lie. I thought for a long time how I wanted to do this, and this is what I came up with, and it seems to be working really, really well. It's been working for over a month now, and I thought maybe it could help some of you. These cabinets are very shallow. This house was built in 1968. They were not building for space back then, honey, let me tell you. But what I did was I found some of these containers, these I just bought at Walmart, and we just took the lids off of them. But when I need something from this cabinet now, all I have to do is pull this tray out, pull it down here, and everything I need is right here. I have a couple spices that I reach for all the time that are not in my spice rack. Baking powder, baking soda, cornstarch, some beef and chicken bouillon, salt and sugar, along with my wonder flour and my little powdered sugar shaker. There's even some room on the side here where I can put a few extra things, but it doesn't stop this from going in and out. I did kind of want to put some semblance to this. Like this one has some overflow spices, my cooking spray, extracts and flavorings, and what have you, and my vanilla powder that I made liquid smoke, what have you. <laughs> and I'm not gonna take down the one on the top, but it has like um, different spices in mason jars that I use, homemade blends that I've made, um, corn syrup that I don't reach for very often. But this way I'm not like trying to reach because I'm super short I always have to call Rick for something or I don't have to stand on a chair. I can just pull that whole box down and, and I this can- This container is almost perfect for this shelf. Well, it really is. It is perfect for this shelf. And there's a little bit of wiggle room on either side. And like, look, you know, we all do it. Somebody opens up a box of pasta and only uses half. Mm -hmm. That fits right in here perfectly. And then you'll just know the next time. And there's some spices that are like, that I do use all the time that are like over there and they're not in anybody's way. So I'm gonna take you into the back hallway and show you what I did similarly in my pantry closets. Okay, this is one of my pantries. This is the one in the very back of my hallway. What I did was I got several of these clear um, shoe boxes, and you're gonna hear a cat whining because he's in the bedroom and he wants out. Um, and I organized them in what was logical to me. Like, there's baking supplies, there's cake mixes, there's dried fruits, there's um, like breadcrumbs and different things that I would need and there are some loose items in here but they're bigger containers so I know what they are. This is like seeds and nuts and things and this is rice products and Asian ingredients down here and jelly and syrups and salad dressings and then this shelf down here has bigger items that don't fit in a shoebox but I know it's down there little um, more bulk items and then down here are items and I apologize for the lighting but we're not bringing the light back here um, and down there are number 10 cans of shelf stable foods for my food storage that I use all the time and in the door I have some spices in bigger containers that I refill from in the kitchen. And then I have packages of Jello and packages of pudding. And um, that's what's in this back pantry. This has been working so well for us for like six weeks. And I can't imagine not having it like this anymore because when I open this cabinet, I can just grab the tray that I need out, pull out what I need and put it back. It also helps me keep a better inventory of the things that I have on hand. This was so packed before you couldn't see what was in the back of it. It's true. It's really true. And then I'll tell you a story. I'm going to go show you mm -hmm. the front pantry here. 
Very similar setup in the front pantry. These two closets are exactly the same size. Um, They're actually supposed to be linen closets, but we converted them. They are. The one in the back didn't have shelves in it at all when we moved into this house, and Rick built those in for me. And this one did have shelves in it, and it was really more intended but for linens. It had like three shelves in it, and I added two. You did add more shelves, that's true. So in the bottom, I have things in containers and some things on the floor, like I have dish soap that's easy to reach. I have pet formula. Um, and then like this container has some small appliances in it. I have my mini food processor and two hand mixers in here. And then on the bottom down there, I've got some overflow uh, spices. There is that bagel seasoning I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, and this box has all of my cake decorating supplies and whatnot in it. And overflow sedged spices. Um, Oh, this is cake decorating. This is overflow spices, and this literally, that box down there is all like cake sprinkles and decorations. I've got all of my cake decorating items. This is all of my cake tips and all of that business that I would need to reach for. This is an overflow seasoning. Um, and everything I know where it is, which I love. Pasta of different kinds. This whole shelf is pasta. So that's just how it is. Macaroni and cheese. And in the back, sometimes I've taken in the back, I have garbage bags, um, macaroni and cheese. This is a bone stock, a bone broth, vegetable broth. These are just some random items that as I use them up, I probably will find a different use for this bin. And then up here, the all important cocktail shaker. Um, I have, this is like for the baking aisle. This is uh, a bag of sugar was just removed, but four bags of sugar, granulated sugar. This is powdered sugar and brown sugar and flour. And then that shelf up there has always been for the hooch. Um, and then of course on the door, we have these little racks. Um, we actually bought a rack that was all together and Rick sawed it apart for me and he attached it to the door. So all of my seasonings, blends, and then I've got them kind of separated how they make sense for me. Garlic and onion, so granulated and minced. Then down here I've got my like savory spices. Down here, yes I do use gravy mixes. There's nothing wrong with those, but I do make it from scratch when I need to. And these would be warm baking spices down here on the bottom. So this is just what works for me. And I thought maybe it would help someone else because sometimes this mess that we call life can get completely out of control. And I wanted to share with you that I am not unlike many of you and I am ashamed to say that we took an entire load to the dump when I cleaned these pantries out. Um, I'm not proud of it, but you know, well, some stuff in boxes and stuff that just the things that were out of date. Yeah. Um, I preach all the time, use what you eat, eat what you store, and first one in, last one out. Um, or, you know, it, it's a great rule to adhere to, but sometimes we don't follow our own rules the way we should. And, you know, if maybe my mistakes can help some of you, that's fantastic. I am not too proud to admit that I made a lot of them. Um, yeah, I was not proud to go to the dump and throw so much stuff away that could have maybe helped some others or the to think about how much money I had spent on all those things over the years, but literally there were things in there that were 10 or 11 years old. And when I first got the self-preparation bug, um, the self-sufficiency bug, I went all out and I was super enthusiastic and over time, I kind of realized that this, some of these things weren't working for me, but I never really stopped adhering to the, you know, pack it in kind of thing. Um, if you're going to go to the store when something's on sale, instead of buying two, buy 12. Um, the problem is there are some things that we always use and there are some things that we never use. So this was also one of those life lesson things. So before you go off and do that, learn from my mistakes. If you uh, find this helpful, then these, these shoe boxes are super cheap and they're just really a way to compartmentalize your pantry and make things a little bit easier for you. You can tell, you know, I, um, 
I have three bags of egg noodles down here, right? But look, you want to see something absolutely hysterical? Every time I thought I needed a bag of, of orzo, I bought a bag of orzo. But look at this. I have orzo and orzo and orzo and orzo and orzo. No person needs this much orzo. I promise you. And I have fideo coming out my ears. But I'm not afraid to say these things won't go bad and they'll get used. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you learn something I hope that it will help you in your life and if you can use it fantastic if not take from it what you can and um, make sure you hit the subscribe button make sure you hit the bell notification button give me a thumbs up I hope that you like this video and until next time I'll see ya